I'm Tater Cat, and welcome to my channel. Today we are playing Sentimental Trickster. Last time, um, after we got an apology from Remy, I think was his name, the alpha guy, we went on a lunch date with Hawkeye, and we embarrassed ourselves a bit and learned nothing about him, really. Then we decided to call our brother, and... We had a little touching moment, we decided to get a job, and we couldn't find anything, so now we're talking to Cool Guy. That's pretty much where we left off. Alright, let's continue. Yeah? Maybe I could talk with the higher-ups. They've been talking about splitting this position. Where did the music go? Did I... Is there just not music playing, or did I somehow destroy the music? Let's see. Uh, preferences. Nope. Music's still there. They're just not playing music. Really? I don't want to step on your toes. Nah, man. It's cool. Step away. Besides, I'll always take help scrubbing urinals. I scrunch up my nose. Not exactly the most glamorous job. But financial independence is a lot more appealing than knowing I'll have to clean the toilets. I'll do it. Besides, Jin the Jander needs a sidekick, right? The mop of justice isn't going to push itself. That's right. I need a second set of eyes out there. He shoots me a grin, and it's so infectious I can't help but smile back. I'm in such a good mood, I almost forget the time. Oh crap, I have to get to class. I'll find you at lunch and talk to you more about it. Sure thing, don't worry. I'll leave some work for you. I dash off down the hall to class. Today we start with acting. This is a nice acting room. I don't know why an acting room needs lots and lots of mirrors, but I've never taken an acting class, so what do I know? I like this background. Like, because the floors are nice and shiny, you can see the reflection of the windows and everything. They do the holy, oh, you can't see outside windows, but that's okay. The classroom is rather small and sparse, save a couple of chairs and a big mirror. There may be 16 people standing in pairs or groups. So Ichiro enters right after me. He teaches both psychology and acting? That's unusual. I glance at Hane. I must look pretty confused because he smiles and whispers to me. So Ichiro is filling in for a sick teacher. Hello everyone. We have a new student. Haru, I hope you'll make him feel welcome. Everyone's eyes focus on me for a moment and I feel a blush making its way to my cheeks. Now, let's begin. Phew, no introduction necessary, thank you for that. Haru, could you come here please? Uh oh. I approach Suichiro and stand in front of the class. I try to keep my expression neutral. I hope my hands aren't shaking. I think the best way to show you what we usually do here is for you to participate in one of the activities. Now, pick one card, please. He presents me with a big red hat. There will be a short scene described there. Your task is to act it out. Apparently, Suichiro's kindness doesn't extend to roleplay. I nod and quickly draw a card from the hat. Don't read it yet. This is a scene for two, so we'll choose someone to act it out with you. So Ichiro makes a point to look around, but I have the feeling it's already decided, and I won't like it. Why are they, we all in all of the same classes? I know we are in an art university, but there's like different majors in the university. If we're in psychology, okay, I get it. Some of us might be like, why are we all in acting? 
Like Shinya, shouldn't he be like in classic art? I don't know what you the proper term is for that major. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean he'd be in an acting class with us. It's just it's a little odd. That's all. We'll just chalk it up to sheer coincidence. Shinya, could you join us, please? Shinya looks offended, but approaches us without a word. So Ichiro gestures at the card, so I have no choice but to read it. You bought a faulty product. Convince the sales clerk to let you return it. Oh, great. Haru, you'll be the customer, okay? Uh, sure. Ready? No. I'm ready. Ready. Okay, I can do this. I swish my arm at the imaginary door. Shinya eyes me, his chin up. You'd think an alley cat had just dragged a garbage bag inside the store. And I'm the garbage bag. Can I help you? I'd like to return this, uh, computer. It doesn't work. When I switch it on, nothing happens. I'm afraid that I won't be able to help you. No? No. Okay. Can I talk to the manager then? Shinya sighs and looks at me. I, this really the best you can do. I assume that's supposed to be is. Is written all over his face. He's on holiday. That's reasonable. If I worked with you, I'd also want to be as far away from you as possible. Shinya looks at Soichiro. Maybe it would be better to stop. He's clearly unable to perform the task. So Ichiro blinks and regards us. He scratches his neck, unsure about what to do. Oh come on, can you honestly say the way he acted was any good? He's supposed to sell freaking computers, not Ferraris. Computer sellers are not stuck up. They are nerds. Such a high and mighty attitude would get you fired in a day. Let's just focus on the task. Come on, you can do it. The encouragement falls flat, so hard it breaks its nose. I think the problem here is not with being able, but willing. We eye each other waiting to see who will fold. Shinya speaks first. Does the power up? I blink. Did he decide to play along and get it over with? No. No fans run, no lights turn on, nothing. Have you checked the connections? Yeah, all the cables were firmly attached. I got rid of the power strip and plugged the computer directly into the wall. No luck. Then I plugged a lamp in just to see if the socket was working correctly. It was. The monitor seemed to be working too, so I plugged its power cable into the computer. Still nothing. Shinya nods. What about the power switch and the power button? The one on the back was definitely switched on. The power and reset buttons were properly connected to the motherboard. I checked the cables. He's silent for a while. Finally, he looks at me. It is possible that you received a faulty motherboard. We'll check it out and contact you if we find anything. Uh, thank you. I'll leave my contact info. Here, bye. I glance at Soichiro. He gives us a thumb up. Great work, guys. Now, do the rest of you have any comments on their performance? Some students offer their suggestions. I'm still gaping at Shinya. Did we really resolve the matter peacefully? Is there hope for humanity after all? Haru, would you like to go again? No. Sure, of course. Huh? Wait. What? I wasn't really listening. Shinya regards me. 
his expression unreadable. He leaves the stage quickly. I guess our cooperation ends here. So he drew a beams at me, he empties the hat, and puts a couple of new cards inside. Okay, maybe we could try something a bit more challenging this time. Let's pick a new partner for you, Haru. Let me guess. Kane. Kane. Could you come here, please? Hane approaches us, wearing his usual smile. All eyes seem to follow him. I know Suichiro picked him because he thought I'd feel more comfortable acting with someone I'd already met, and I know I should be grateful. Too bad my heart doesn't follow my sound reasoning. Right now it wants to rip out of my chest from sheer panic. Haru, pick a card please. I put my hand inside the hat and retrieve the next scene. Please let it be painless. Your partner wants to end your relationship. Can you do something to make him or her stay? <laughs> uh, this is what you get for jinxing yourself. Uh, I'm sorry. When I was preparing the cards, I uh, didn't really take into consideration the... Uh, it's okay. We don't need to exchange it. We don't? My voice comes out a bit squeaky, so I clear my throat. Kane gives me a reassuring smile. It's a great chance to improve our acting skills. The more difficult the exercise, the more we can learn from it. Besides, we don't need to be perfect. Everyone is here to support each other. Not to judge. What is this music? It's a bit weird. As usual, Kane knows exactly what to say. I hear a murmur of agreement from the other students. A couple of girls are staring at us a bit too intently, though, like, they want to engrave every second of the scene in their memory. I wonder if shipping real people is as much of a thing here as it is in my town. You never know. <laughs> Okay, just give me a moment to prepare. Sure. Which part do you want to play? Uh, the cards are addressed to those who draw them, so in this case, Haru should be, uh, the one who's being ditched. Gotcha. Not that I'm complaining. If it was the other way around, it'd be too unrealistic. We spend a few minutes preparing. When Kane faces me again, I'm struck by how different he seems. His eyes regard me without a shred on humor. There's a bit of mistranslation in this game, isn't there? We'll ignore it, though. Shred of humor. His mouth set into a thin, determined line. We have to talk. This music is not suiting the scene. Uh oh. Is this about the fact that I ate the last cookie? Haru, how could you? I didn't know you wanted it, I swear. Okay, I'm lying. Even if you had specifically told me not to eat it, I would have done it anyway. I'm a filthy, disgusting pig that needs to be punished. Have I mentioned that I don't have much of a filter when I panic. Honey's lip twitches, but other than that, he maintains his composure. No. It's not about that. I'm sorry, but it's not working out. I think we should break up. But why? I don't think you care about me as much as I care about you. Okay, that is definitely not true. But you don't spend that much time with me. And even when we're together, you treat me exactly like you treat your friends. I don't feel like I'm special to you. Sometimes, I wonder if you're with me only because I asked you out. You asked me out? Okay, time out. My brain can't process the world you're trying to build here. 
I, uh, am sorry. I promise I'm going to pay more attention to you. And I swear you're much more important to me than any of my friends. So, uh, give me another chance, please? I'm sorry, but it's too late. Besides, I don't want you to force yourself for my sake. It would just make both of us miserable. Let's part as friends. I hope we both find what we're looking for. Goodbye, Haru. He gives me one last wistful smile and starts turning away. I don't blame him after the last lame-ass attempt at patching things up. I dump me too. Let him go, fight for him. Let's fight for him, damn it. Okay? I mean, he was okay with us eating his cookie. That means everything in a relationship. But what if this was real? What if I had someone who really loved me and it hurt him so much he decided to break up with me? I don't want things to end this way. Oh, well, we got really close really fast there. I close the distance between us and grab his wrist, making him face me again. Wait. You're right. I don't want to change. Who does? It's much easier to just live your life as your own weak, pathetic self. God forbid you make an effort and become a half-decent person. Except in this case, there's no other way. Because you're the one I've been looking for. Of course, when I found you, I messed it up. And now you're fed up with me. Do you really think things could be different between us? I don't know. But I want to try. I have to try. You want to try? I didn't know you were so selfish. Right? Honestly, I don't know what you see in me. I say weird things, trip over thin air, and make bad fashion choices. You're just stabbing yourself there with words, aren't you? I'm probably the worst boyfriend ever. But uh, since you're the best, we kind of compliment each other, right? So. Will you stay with me? Uh, <laughs> I stare at Kane as his laughter fills the room. Everyone else soon follows him, creating a symphony of friendly giggles and chuckles. When he looks at me again, he's not in character anymore. That was quite interesting. I think you deserve a second chance. Uh, thanks? Great job, Haru. I knew you could do it. It was such a heartfelt, passionate delivery. I think anyone would be fortunate to hear it. Sure. <laughs> so Ichiro gazes at me, his eyes full of pride. I feel a blush spread all over my face. I didn't mean to be so... believable. As soon as class ends, I bolt outside. I'm not running away, I'm just not prepared for all the fame and adoration after my spectacular performance. As I walk to my next class, I see Anna. She's standing alone, leaning against the wall. Her shoulders are hunched, her eyes fixed on the floor. Every time someone walks by, her head jerks up and then goes down again. She looks like an abandoned puppy. She's prettier than all the girls from my old town combined. But the way she acts... Is she one of those rare creatures who became attractive later in life and hasn't realized it yet? Uh, hi. Hello. Now for the hard part. What should I talk about? The weird play I saw yesterday. Anna's look. Sailor Noon. When it out Sailor Noon? We seem to both like Sailor Noon, right? Love and justice. 
and the name of the noon and all that. But this magical girl anime is the only thing we have in common, and she already knows I've seen it. You know, I still have a poster of Sailor Noon hanging in my room at home. I used to hide it when my friends were visiting. I was so afraid that someone would find out I was watching a kid's show and make fun of me. And then people stopped coming over and I had nothing to fear anymore. Uh, sorry. I just told her something embarrassing, but it doesn't look like she'll laugh at me. Boys. Once, boys took my sailor new keychain and hid it somewhere. I was crying, but they wouldn't tell me where it was. Midori yelled at them and helped me find it. She smiles at the memory. Maybe I should ask about Midori. You must really like Midori. Midori sounds like someone you can depend on. Midori sounds like the nosy type. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by a toe. If you holler, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I know it landed on this one, but I'm going to choose the first one. You must really like Midori. Oh, maybe I chose the wrong one. And maybe you should have gone with the fates of Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo. Anna looks at me, her eyes wide. Then she blushes and lowers her head. Am I wrong? Don't you like her? Do we have a Yuri couple in the Yaoi game? Fantastic. All the whys. I don't think she'll say any more. I might as well go to my next class. I go to meet up with Jen to talk a little more about the job. A part of me is actually really excited about it. I want to be able to prove that I can do this for myself. After all, every dollar earned means I don't have to go back home again. Not that it's home anymore. Rounding a corner, I accidentally slam into someone. Why is she still there? We both go flying to the ground. Why is she still here? Why is she still- I feel like she should have disappeared. Dang, I'm sorry. Is this- Is this a glitch? Whatever. Watch where you're going, you jerk! I look over and see a kid who can't be more than 11 or 12 picking herself off the floor. I want to apologize again, but she did just call me a jerk. Hey, no need to call me names. Are you okay? No, I am not okay. You could have hurt me. And where did it go? For a moment, she looks worried and then grabs a lunchbox that must have slipped her grasp when she fell. She checks the contents to make sure they're okay and heaves a sigh of relief. You should count yourself lucky, punk. Watch where you're going. Hey, what did I say about name calling? Without another word, she hops to her feet and runs down the hall. All I can do is blink a moment as I watch her weave in and out of the crowd of people nearly taking out kneecaps. Maybe you should stop running. The heck is a kid doing here? With a groan, I pull myself up. Some superhero, my arch nemesis, is in the 8th grade. Oh well, time to find Jin. People are still here that shouldn't be here. Okay, they're gone now. <laughs> I see Jin in the hallway, leaning up against the wall. As I start making my way over to him, the morose girl materializes out of nowhere. You forgot your lunch again. With a hand in his hair, Jin chuckles softly. Looking more closely at the girl, I can see a resemblance. A sister, maybe? What can I say? You work as much as me. You forget a lunch or two. Thanks, Ayumi. It's not just one or two, Jin. This is the fourth time this week. If I don't bring your lunch, what are you going to eat? A bag of chips and a soda? Gross. You need to stop taking such bad care of herself. You're not a teenager. It's strange coming from her. How old is she? She looks like she's in junior high, maybe. 
Her tone sounds cheating, but it's obvious that she's worried about him. It's okay, really. You know, you don't have to worry about me. I can take care of myself. She harumphs and looks up, noticing me watching. Why are you watching us, jerk? Haru? Ayumi, this is my friend. He's not a jerk. Besides, I told him to meet me here. She eyeballs me and harumphs. She harumphs a lot. He knocked me over in the hall. He shouldn't have been running. You shouldn't have been running, brat. Why is she so angry? Especially when her brother is so easygoing. You were running too. She turns beet red and looks away. I have to get here before my lunch break ends too, you know. All because someone is inconveniencing me. I'm sorry. I'll try to remember tomorrow. But you know, you don't have to worry about me. I'm supposed to be taking care of you. A look passes over Jin's face. Maybe I only imagine it? Does he look after his sister alone? It's not my place to pry. Don't worry about it. Now, eat up. I spent way too long cooking for that to go to waste, you know? Laughing, he pulls off the top of the lunchbox. There's a perfectly made lunch inside. Vegetables cut into a heart and star shapes and a sandwich shaped like a bear. Aww. Aww, look at that. You always make the best stuff, kiddo. Ayumi blushes, but it's obvious she takes pride in this. Wow, you're really an artist when it comes to food, huh? It's not that great. Oh yeah, she is. She makes some of the best food I've ever eaten. Her curry is seriously the greatest. Maybe you can come over sometime and if she wants to cook, you can try some. Wait a minute. Am I being asked out on a date? Cooked for by this guy's sister? I can feel my ears turning pink. I, uh, mean, that would be great. I mean, if you wanted to cook, Ayumi. She squints, looking back and forth at the both of us. Her mouth is set in a hard line. Uh-oh. Finally, she sighs. Will you to put me on the chopping block? I'll think about it. Anyway, I have to go. Enjoy your lunch. Call me if you're going to be late to dinner. She's gone in a rush. Engine laughs. Is she always like that? Like a little boss? Oh yeah. She likes to run a tight ship. I tried to tell her to go with the flow, but she worries constantly. Well, probably better than not caring at all, I guess. Whenever you want to start, you're good to go, by the way. Just let me know. I'll show you the ropes. Oh, really? That's great. Do I need to sign any paperwork or... Nah. You'll just report to me. No hassle. Eh? I mean, I will be your supervisor. Easy enough, right? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I never had a job before, so I really don't know how it works. Maybe I can start Monday? After all, that is the only day we're seeing. All the other days, apparently, we occasionally hallucinate. Sure. Rule one, always keep a lookout for bullying and stuff. That kind of goes without saying, you know? Bullying and stuff? What stuff? Well, yeah, can't let people get away with being jerks all the time. I'm glad you agree. Well, I have to get back to class. Enjoy your lunch. Okay, we'll end this episode here. We'll see how our new job goes in the next episode. I'm Tato Cat. If you have an already like, comment, and subscribe. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.